Hi everyone, it's Fanola Howard and this is Ask Fanola How. Here is a question that's really interesting and I'm asked it quite a lot and I've often, I've even been asked it when I've been delivering it at conferences and somebody pulls me aside and says, Fanola, how can I charge more for my services? And it's quite an interesting one because it often gets quite emotional, but let's break it down so that we're not so emotional about it all, okay? So let's start with the undercurrent or the foundation, the fundamentals of that question. And the fundamentals of that question is it's about price. So what's your pricing strategy? Okay. And price is an interesting one because people often think of price and the decision around price as being something you discuss with your accountant, something that just uh, occurs in relation to costs and something that's purely a financial decision. And that's not the case. The first, there are four factors that affect your pricing strategy. The first one, yes, indeed, is costs, covering costs, making sure that everything you have is sorted, that you've quantified the price of, the costs of the electricity you've used to create it, the um, ingredients, the um, anything that in, is involved in producing that product, um, your time, the time of your uh, employees to create that product and if it's a service it's also your time because your time is directly related to your ability to scale your business etc etc okay and when you start a business you're not thinking that you want to price your time so that you earn minimum wage you're wanting to move your business move your expertise grow your business etc etc okay so price yes the first part of this is a financial decision but everything else is a positioning decision. It's a marketing decision for your business because it dictates who your customer it is, how you're positioned in their mind, and all of that, and actually dictates this, the rate or the, the way that you can actually grow your business. What is the um, trajectory that you will grow your business on is actually fundamentally influenced by price, okay? Price influences that. There are, Three other things I want you to think about when we think about price. So first is the costs and covering your costs and all the rest of it uh, in terms of time, ingredients, anything else. The second, and ingredients can be any materials that you produce, any software that you have to buy if it's a service, okay? Um, but the second thing is, what will the market bear? So you start with knowing what it costs you to produce something. And the second decision has to be, what will the market bear? So your decision has to be around, well, let's look at the market. And one of the exercises that I get people to do on the Get Strategic program is to profile the pricing strategy of your closest competitors, okay? So you pick, not everyone, you pick four, hey, <laughs> you pick four or five, max four or five competitors and look at how their prices, how they speak about their product, break down what they offer and compare yourself and their offering to your offering and note what their price is so that you can see where am I currently positioned in this? Where can I see myself in relation to this? And that's a really valuable thing because it lets you take the temperature of the marketplace and then you know you will get a sense of what can the market bear here? So pivotal. So first your price, first your costs. Second, take the temperature of the marketplace. And how you take the temperature of the marketplace is see what your competitors do, are doing. Now, if you come back to me and you say to me, but I have no competitors, Fanola. You always have competitors. Think of competitors as someone whose wallet, the share of wallet that they own. So if, you're, if you think of your customer as someone who has a wallet with a limited amount of money in that wallet, if they're not spending it with you, who are they spending it with? That's your competitor. Not necessarily somebody who's producing exactly the same thing as you. So for example, as a marketer, you might think that my only competitor is other marketers. But my other competitor could be a business coach. It could be a financial strategist. It could be this kind of stuff. So don't be too linear in your thinking about who your competitor is. Look in their wallets. Look in your customer's wallet, and if they're not spending it with you, who are they spending it with? That's your competitor. So we've done two things in pricing. First, we figured out what are my costs. Two, we figured out what 
Can the market bear? Three, the next thing that I want you to think about, okay, is what does price say about your product or service? Because if you go too cheap, it says something. If you go too expensive, it says something else. It actually frames you in a certain position. Now you will get a sense of that positioning when you look at your competitors. That's why it's so valuable to do it, but not to get so kind of preoccupied with all of your competitors. What you're trying to do is take temperature, not be perfect, not be perfectionist about this. So let's take the temperature of what can the, what does the market say? When I look here at this price, what does this say about my product? At this price, higher value price, what does that say about my product? My one piece of advice here is pricing too cheaply is always a race to the bottom. Because you can't, if your competitors are all pricing on, are, are all pricing so that they are the cheapest in the market, I'd find another market. I really would. What you want to see is sit down and sit and speak to your customers and get a sense of what does price say? What does this price say about me and my product if my customer sees this? And this is why we have things like luxury products and services, because if someone is too cheap, it can mean that their product is too cheap and, too, and lacks quality. If their product is very expensive, and this way you have luxury brands, because this makes it more exclusive, it allows you to add more value, but it tells a story. So price tells a story. What does your price, what story does your price tell about you and your services, okay? The next one is, ultimately, and the last and most important, is what is the will market willing to pay for your product or service? So you have these other three looking here about your costs, what the, what the um, your competitors are doing, and what the price says about me. But I also kind of want you to think about, if you think about your pricing strategy, particularly if you're new to business, and you're doing things at a certain rate so that you can actually reach more customers because you want to get more. It's like this portfolio building we were talking about last week. And you're pricing to gain entry, to actually put this lever in the door to get in the door. Have a plan for five years ahead or three years ahead to say, yeah, I'm opening the door with this, but I have a specific plan in place to move me. Because if you don't consciously decide that, you won't move. And that's what happens there, and I see it all the time, what happens there is you feel stuck and you feel like you can never change your prices. What I want to read to you now is the question that I was asked for this particular Ask Finola How, okay? And it might resonate with you. So, I'm not charging as much as, much as I want to charge for my services, but I can't get out of the rut I'm in. This is what I'm talking about. When you start at a certain level and then you feel like you can't move, okay? And I am asked this all the time. So this is a strategic decision, okay? I'm not charging as much as I want to charge for my services, but I can't get out of the rut I'm in. I don't know how to charge more. There are competitors who charge the same as me and others who charge three times what I'm quoting, which I think is daylight robbery. All I know is I have to start charging more, but I don't know how. I'm in a rut with a certain type of clientele who have certain expectations. So ultimately, my ultimate response is two things. One is, are they the clientele you want? How are you communicating your value? Do they know your value? Do you know your value? Do you know your worth that you're bringing to the marketplace? Because sometimes we, in our spirit of generosity and our desire to help our customers, because we do start these businesses with love, with this desire to help others, and we often can give and give and give and not have very clear boundaries of what is acceptable, of how you can say, of course I can help you with that, and that will be X. You are allowed to draw very, very clear boundaries in terms of what services, what you bring to the marketplace. And if you don't draw, if you don't draw those very clear boundaries, what will happen is that you start to not to value your own worth. And it becomes very hazy to your customer what your worth is. So you take this time and you sit and you say, okay, if I'm not sure that I'm pricing correctly or I'm unhappy with the way I'm pricing my services, 
I need to look at a couple of things. One, is this the right customer for me? Okay, and then you actually say yes or no. If you say yes, you keep going. If you say no, define the right customer for you so that you can move on. And that's a whole other strategy, okay? But we want to be clear about our pricing and what it says and what it can do for our business. So firstly, is this the right client for me? Yes or no, act accordingly. The second then is, have, does my customer actually know the value that I bring? Because often in these relationships, particularly in relation to services, we're, we move in flow with clients and we don't, and we often in our desire to help can give and give and give. And as a result, the value is lost in translation. So we need to be very clear in our messaging what and draw a fence around it. You're never saying no to offering more. You're just drawing a fence around this is the package. This is the value that I bring. This is the change I will make to you. This is the pain point I will solve. Here is the answer, okay? So you're being very clear because when you are not getting what you're worth, when your services are not generating the value that you want from them, it means that your messaging around your price and your value and your worth are not clear. Simplify, simplify, simplify. Make it really clear, write it down, package it, be very clear. If it takes too long to explain it, then there's too much involved in it. I find this a lot that we often want to go, and I do this, and I do this, and I do that, and then people can't make a choice. Less is more in how you communicate the value that you bring to your customer. When you have a clearly, a clear boundary around what the product is, what the package, what the service is, making it really clear and really simple to understand, then it's easy to charge for your services. And it's easy to grow your business in that way. So clarity of messaging around what it is you're bringing, making sure that it stands out above your competitor. So when you do this little bit of competitor analysis at the start of what they're offering and what you're offering and where the gaps are, I always call this gap analysis, finding out the key difference, watching their pricing strategy and seeing very clearly, because if you do this like in an Excel spreadsheet and you map, what are the pieces of this that they're offering? Where am I in all of this? And where's the gap that I can leverage that I know my customer needs? simplifying the messaging around that and showing your worth in your messaging. That's number two. And number three is making sure that you have very, very clear boundaries about what you give and take to customers because they want those boundaries. They want to feel positive about the relationship so they can buy more from you. And if it's a hazy relationship, it makes them uncomfortable too. You giving and giving and giving makes them uncomfortable. You having clear boundaries means they know it's safe to come back and buy more from you, that they want to develop this relationship with you because it's a good, solid, successful interchange between the two of you, okay? Clear boundaries. It's number one piece of advice for you when you're not sure around your pricing, okay? Um, yeah, the other thing that I noted for myself to say to you is, if you don't have clear boundaries, then there's too much leakage. So think of it that, you are leaking money out the door when you're not clear about what you're offering. And it's not a good thing. Leaks are not good things, okay? So the other thing I want to say to you, because this is a topic that comes up a lot in networks and stuff, but your boundaries are your responsibility, okay? Your boundaries are your responsibility. So if you want to have positive working relationships with your customers, then you have to be clear about your boundaries. It's not their responsibility. So when you're not receiving your worth, it may be that you haven't defined your worth. Maybe you haven't even seen your own worth, but it is your responsibility and you can change it. There's a wonderful, um, and I think it's Jim Collins that talked about this example, which is thinking about, you know, if we think about if you are starting a business and you're, not, and you're making a conscious decision to actually open that door with a lower price to move, to actually create this lever to go further, you can, if you come in the door at this, at this level and, to, and actually say, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm going to decide now that this is my pri price point upon entry and this is my price point at the end. I have a strategy in place and I've done this myself 
where you can have a four or five year strategy to enter a market at a certain rate to get your portfolio building out of the way and move consistently year upon year to move your pricing accordingly. And that means it's not a moment in time that you decide on your pricing strategy. It is a strategy. So you take actions now in the short term for a certain benefit, which may be testimonials, it may be experience, it may be ways of doing better processes and systems to deliver. And then as you move on, because your expertise grows, the better you get, the more you're worth, the greater value you deliver. Match your strategy to your worth, to your value that you deliver, have very clear boundaries around it. And that's your strategy. I hope that makes sense. So as an idea. Oh yeah, so here is the example I wanted to give you. There's a very interesting exercise for the service industry that I think it was Jim Collins that did this exercise. And what they did is at the end of each year, you look at your finances, you look at your accounts and you look at the top three clients that you've had that year, okay? So say you get you someone at your top three each spend 100 euro with you or 100,000 euro, whatever it is. Everyone else spends an average of 30 euro, everyone else spends 100 euro. So take the average of the top three clients that you have, the average spend, and make that the baseline for the following year. And if you do that every year, you will grow your business. This is an exercise I did myself. It works, it's very logical. You don't have to kind of second guess yourself. It's very logical because you're allowing the market to teach you how to move. And yeah, that's worth it. So if you have any questions, <laughs> please ask me. I'm always here uh, to answer your questions. And this was Ask Finola How, episode 13, and we were talking about price. Looking forward to talking to you next week. Take care. Have a great day.